first things first, I'm the realest. realest. Drop this and let the whole world feel it. Let them feel it. And I'm still in the murder business. I can hold you down like I'm giving lessons in physics. Right, right. right. You should want a bad bitch like this. Huh? Drop it low and pick it up just like this. Yeah. yeah. Cup of ace, cup of goose, cup of Chris. I heal something worth a half a ticket on my wrist. Man. On my wrist. Taking all the liquor straight. Never chase that. Never Ooh. stop like we bring an 88 back. What? Bring the hook scene where the bass at. Champagne spilling, you should taste that. I'm so fancy. Shante Moore on the line. Shante, welcome to the Midnight Hour Radio Show. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. So what it feel like to be a diva? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just being myself, so if that was a diva, then it feels good. <laughs> right. I know that's right. Good answer, good answer, good answer, good answer. Yeah, good answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want her on my team, yes. <laughs> hey Shante, this is uh, Anna Redding. How many years have you been uh, in the music business now? Oh gosh, I came out. My first single was in 1992, I think. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. As long as you've been singing. Now, was that uh, Shante's Got a Man? No, it wasn't. Uh, uh-uh. Love Taking Over was my first single. Oh, that's right. Mm. I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. And did it take over? Uh, <laughs> well, okay, no comment on okay, that. Right. <laughs> it's a secret. Well, Shantae, tell us, tell us, you know, you got a lot of fans and you got five million people listening, almost six million. Uh, this is Myron Grace on the Midnight Hour radio show with diva, songwriter, producer Shantae Moore. Hey, Myron, how you doing? I'm all right, all right, yeah. <laughs> Nice so, Shante, what, what inspired you to become a singer at a young age? Well, uh, when I was a little girl, I was only allowed to listen to gospel music in my household. So, um, Andre Crouch and Winans and Tremaine Hawkins and the Hawkins family, that was who I listened to growing up, and my mother. Um, so, that was my inspiration. Music was just about gospel. It was about truth. It was about feeling the emotion and the commitment to God. And that's where it began. Um, my love for music, it was in my house. Do you think that's how you uh, developed your strong voice? Well, you know, <clears throat> to be honest, my family did not particularly think that I was the singer of the family. My, my wow. family is very musical. So my sister, Laton, is my older sister, and she was the one who led songs and my mother. I wasn't the one. I really did more ballet and dancing and things like that, believe it or not. Uh, they were like, you're cute, but singing, nah. Man, oh, oh, I find that hard oh, to believe. Cool. You, have, like, you, you are a songbird, and that I find that cold. hard to believe. How many platinum well, albums later? Maybe because of the way they did that, it just challenged me. I don't know. I just love to sing. It's what I love to do. So when they were like, shh, be quiet, Sean, please stop. I would like go in my room. My mom bought me a tape recorder so she could, she said, so I could hear how badly I sounded. And so I went in my room, and I would just sing in the tape recorder and just play my music and dance around the room and act out songs. And it was what I loved. It was in my hmm. blood. So you remember <laughs> them boom boxes. I remember them boom boxes, too. I Actually, then it was a record player, to be honest with you. It was <laughs> a record player. <laughs> like the one I had. It, it was a suitcase. It really was. It was in a little suitcase. Little nah, you was messing with the 8-tracks. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had them my too. daddy did make 8-track, um, um, like mix 8-track tapes. Oh, oh for real? I remember those as mix, a kid. My dad uh, would make them, but I, I, when I grew up, it wasn't eight track. Though. That must have been <laughs> cool, right there. Your father was musically inclined like that. That was so. Amazing. Was he? Yeah, he's still alive. He's eighty years old, and he still plays piano. He still will sing, and he preaches and evangelists everywhere. Yeah. Well, let's give a shout out to Shante Moore's father. <laughs> Yeah, Moore. big time hey. shout out. Hey, let me ask you something about your about your pops there. Can he scratch on the uh, eight track? <laughs> yeah, make some scratch. So. Yeah, that's one thing they didn't do is scratch, but they would they would catch though. They you, would catch and they would jump. They would go. Eow, eow. You know what? When when you get a chance to come to Cleveland, you you gonna have to make sure you come to the studio so you can smack you know Big Mo personally for that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ever get beaten with an A track? I got beaten up. with an A track one time. She, my mom, <laughs> she pulled all the all the drill out and wrapped it around her hand. 
Oh, God. No, I'm just kidding, huh? But it's just good to hear that you can do that. So when you compete, you, you compete against yourself or against, like, what your mother said that you could not do when you're singing? You know what? I, I just try to do my best. I really don't um, – I just try to sing from my soul. That's what I really want is I want people to hear and to feel – what it is I feel in the song, I want to display that so that you get connected to what I'm connected to when I wrote the song. That's what I really try to do more than anything is just convince you of this moment, this feeling, this thought is where and who I am. Well, you know what? That one song, you know, who could say, who could sing a song called Shante's Got a Man at Home and it go platinum like that other than you? <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, well, what, what inspired that song right there? Well, my friends were actually complaining about their men, and they literally were saying, you know, God, my boyfriend just, he hit me again. I can't stand it. I was like, girl, don't let him hit you. Don't let him do that. There are good men out there. Another friend of mine and her her friend had broken up, and I was like, wow, I'm really blessed to have a good man in my life. I'm like, but if I have a good man, if I found one, then you can have one too. Don't settle just because it's a man, just because he wears pants. Don't make him the right man for you. So it really was inspired, encouraging my friends and not so much bragging about having a man. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's big time. Yeah, that's big time. You big time bad. You was even big time and talk. <laughs> wow. Spoken word wasn't even out then, huh? See what I'm saying. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know what? You got some new music. You got a song I see called Talking in My Sleep. Yeah. Uh-oh. That's, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, it's a well, good, nice song. If a woman want to whoop your butt, she uh, might talk in her sleep, too. Uh, it can happen. <laughs> she might talk in her sleep about how she gonna beat you down. Yeah. Were you I calling mean, out Mo's name? Oh man. <laughs> just, well, just don't do Al Green on me. I can't. <laughs> no high grits. No grits. <laughs> well, well, you listening to the Midnight Hour Radio Show, and Miss Shantae Moore. We're gonna take it to some of your music real quick, Shantae. Shantae Moore talking in my sleep. Shantae, that was hot. That was hot, Shantae. Thank you. I see you still got it, huh? Oh, she well, more than got it. Keep what I, hopefully it gets better and better. It ain't supposed yeah. to get bad. And you want to keep it. <laughs> if, it's good, so if it's good, you got to keep it maintained. Oh, I know that's right. That's good talk right there. Man. I told you she had spoken word had it came out a long time. She, was spoken word. she just <laughs> IJS and like on mm-hmm. Facebook. If we fight 